Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob, where we say, yeah, China sucks. I mean, that's definitely one way you can take this story. You can take this story as abject proof that China is just a civilization that's lost in the past and will never be able to catch up to the United States. Or you could just take this as the normal quirks of technology development that they'll probably iron out in the next year or two. <laughs> you know, you could, uh, <clears throat> you could definitely take this story in one of two different ways. Uh, so it is interesting. It is interesting, right? Because we have this whole, we have the AI arms race going on right now. AI is more dangerous than nuclear weapons, right? And we're told that the United States has to win the AI war. I don't know. <laughs> For some reason. For some reason, right? And we can't let China get ahead. And so we got all kinds of idiocy going on there, right? Well, the, with this, uh, China is creating their own uh, AI hardware. Uh, Huawei is creating their Ascend GPUs. Uh, and so one of the big questions there is basically how far back are the Ascend series of GPUs? Uh, we've heard uh, some people say the Ascend series are essentially on par with NVIDIA's latest GPUs. They just simply consume more power, which isn't really a big deal for China. Oh no, I mean, China already produces more electricity than like the top 10 other countries in the world at this point. So a little bit of extra electricity consumption, it probably isn't that big a deal. Or the, the thought is that they're probably two years behind. So depending on who you talk to, either uh, they're on par with us, they just use more electricity, or they're two years behind. But I will remind people when they say two years behind, that's 2023. I don't know why. And it, it is one of my problems too. Like I hear China is two years behind. And for some reason, just mentally, I just click to like they're back in like 2000 time frame. Like, oh, must suck that they're still using Windows 95. It's like, no. Two years ago is not Windows 95 era. It is 2023 era. Like... Right, think about this. What if you were forced to use a computer from 2023? You probably really wouldn't care, right? But anyways, so this is kind of interesting what's going on now. A lot of people that like to support Trump with this whole idiocy, with the whole AI war with China, are pointing to this to say this is the huge win. Deep Seek. So Deep Seek, uh, they produce an LLM, so they produced an open source LLM a little while ago. Back last fall, that shook everything up in the LLM space. They're trying to create their second version of that. So DeepSeek reportedly urged by Chinese authorities to train a new model on Huawei hardware. After multiple failures, R2 training to switch back to NVIDIA hardware while Ascend GPUs handle inference. Uh, so we talk about AI, we talk about these LLMs. Uh, there's training. So training is when you dump in literally a metric crap of data. It goes through this whole neural network process thing uh, to come out with what's called a model. And then that model is used uh, in order in the actual process, right? And that's inference. So there's training. Training requires a crap ton of resources. It takes a really long time. That is the most resource intensive thing of AI. But once you've trained, you only have to train once. Once you've trained and you spit out the model, that model can then go onto servers uh, that then do inference. And what inference is, <clears throat> is like when you go, when you go to ChatGPT, when you go to one of these LLMs and you ask it a question, that's inference. Right, so inference requires a lot less resources than training, and so what they're saying here is that the Ascend series failed on training, uh, but seems to work eh, adequately on inference. Which, hmm. <laughs> are you are you saying that the uh, Huawei's chips are doing something adequate in the AI space already? That might be a takeaway here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a new report claims that after successfully training its R1 model on NVIDIA hardware, DeepSeek was urged by Chinese authorities to switch to using Huawei Ascend-based hardware for its next model. However, according to the Financial Times, training for R2 uh, was met with persistent Huawei hardware failures, delaying the release of the model. DeepSeek uh, was reportedly uh, forced to switch back to NVIDIA chips for training while using Huawei's uh, for inference. So one of the things to be thinking about here, 
is right is Huawei is uh, producing uh, this uh, this technology. Uh, they're trying to push it out. Uh, so one of the questions is: is you have two companies, basically you have DeepSeek and you have Huawei. Uh, one of the things to to realize here is that they have different timelines, right? DeepSeek has a timeline. Huawei has a timeline. So when we hear that Huawei's hardware is not up to snuff for DeepSeek, one of the questions that has to be asked is how far off is Huawei's hardware, right? Is Huawei's hardware off by years? Is it off by a decade, right? Off by a decade, then Huawei sucks. On the other hand, Huawei might be off by uh, a few months uh, or you know, six months, maybe a year, something like that, right? DeepSeek is trying to put out their new model. Huawei, you know, right, isn't where they need it to be. So then they want to go back and use uh, NVIDIA. So that's one of the things to, to think about uh, with this. It is interesting. I'm actually reading a book right now. There's a book called House of Huawei. Uh, I would highly recommend you read it. I'm about 20% through the book. Uh, and it, talk, it talks about the growth of Huawei and what Huawei is doing. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting book. It's actually a good book. It's a very well done book. I mean, there's nothing too like scary or anything in there when I say that. Uh, but I think one of the interesting things there with, uh, I was talking about Huawei. I'm at the point where uh, Huawei engineers are in Baghdad when it, we start bombing the ever-loving shit out of it. And they talk about that. They did not, the, the Huawei folks did not actually think the Americans were going to bomb the shit out of Baghdad. Ha <laughs> ha! Shows them how crazy we are. Uh, but the curious thing is it talks about it. <clears throat> and I think this is an important thing to be thinking about. Like in the, in the future, like who, who do people associate with? Who do people see as their own? Who do they aspire to? Who do they want to help? Uh, that type of deal. I talk about this, it was interesting. Uh, when I backpacked through uh, India. So I spent four months backpacking through India way back when, decades ago, over 20 years ago. But one of the interesting things there is you go to India, and India at the time uh, had less than 100,000 uh, tourists a year, right? One billion people, less than 100,000 tourists. Not many people went to India on the tourism thing. So anyways, when you go there and you're a white person, you don't see a lot of white people. You really don't see a lot of white people. So it's actually a really cool bonding experience because when you saw another whitey, you're like, whitey! And they're like, whitey! And so you go there, and that was a thing, right? It's like, you, you're American, and they might be Mexican, or Kiwi, or Spanish, or Portuguese, or what the fuck else. And it didn't matter. You're white! <laughs> You all get together, you drink beers, you're like, isn't this place fucking insane? Oh! Right? And so you, you coalesce together, right? You're in this strange, you're in this very strange land. Uh, and so you're with other people that also find it to be a very strange land. I mean, they're similar to you. I mean, they've got their own quirks, but you're similar enough. And so you kind of bond together. And what was curious there is when we ran into the Israelis, because the Israelis weren't there backpacking for, for shits and giggles. Uh, basically, they were generally there because they had just gotten done with their IDF service, and they had done eh, whatever they had done in their IDF service, and they basically just wanted to get drunk and stoned. <laughs> That was it. So you go there as an American, you'd be like Spanish person or Belgian person or Mexican or Argentinian person or Kiwi or Australian. And then you'd see an Israeli and be like, Israeli. And they look at you and they turn the fuck around and walk away. <laughs> because here's the thing. <laughs> they didn't really have a hell of a lot to talk to you about. Right, all these other people coalesced together, all the whiteies coalesced together, and the Israelis were all the way fucking over there in their own weird little group. And it's an interesting thing to be thinking about, like how we associate, right? How, how do we organically create our associations and that type of deal? That's fascinating. But one of the things that was interesting, you read this book, A House of Huawei, which you should definitely pick up, uh, it was talking about when they were in Baghdad, when they were in Baghdad and they were evacuating. And the interesting thing was where the Huawei engineers looked at the, at the Iraqis stuck in Baghdad during the bombing and associated the Iraqis stuck in uh, Baghdad with their forebearers dealing with the opium wars. That basically the idea being is that these people are so weak, they do not have the ability to defend themselves, and they are being eviscerated by foreign powers that simply because they have strength are able to do this. 
And it was an interesting thing. Like, like again, America, America we're supposed to be the, the shining city on the hill. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> it's adorable. Anyways, right? People are supposed to look up to us. And it is kind of fascinating to think about in this modern world is, yeah, what if, no. <laughs> What if, what if they see the Baghdadi, the, uh, the, uh, the Iraqis, as their peers? What if they see everybody else in the world as their peers? And we are the colonials. I don't know. Some things to ponder. Anyways, uh, let's see here. Uh, so they had to switch to the NVIDIA chips. Um, uh, forced to switch uh, back to chips for training while using Huawei for inference. Uh, following the sex acts of R1, Chinese authorities allegedly encouraged DeepSeek to rely on Huawei's Ascend-based platforms instead of NVIDIA for training, according to three individuals with knowledge of the matter cited by FT. Uh, DeepSeek followed that advice during R2's development, but the move quickly ran into a bunch of issues, including unstable performance, slower chip-to-chip -chip connectivity, and limitations of Huawei's CAN uh, software toolkit. As a result, uh, DeepSeek reverted to using NVIDIA's AI accelerators for training the R2 model while keeping Huawei's hardware for inference. Uh, on one hand, this mixed approach was a compromise born out of necessity rather than preference, but on the other hand, given the shortage of NVIDIA processors in China, it makes sense to ensure uh, that a new AI model works on Huawei hardware, as many of DeepSeek's customers will use R2 on such platforms. So again, they're using uh, the NVIDIA for training, but then in actual production, all right, they're going to be using Huawei. Huawei reportedly sent a team of engineers to DeepSeek's data centers to try to resolve the training problems. Despite their presence, the company has reportedly never managed to fully, successful, uh, fully successfully train uh, run uh, on the Ascend platform. Efforts continue uh, to make the new model compatible with Ascend for inference purposes. The inability to complete training on Ascend uh, was a primary factor behind delaying the R2 launch from its planned May date, a source said. DeepSeek reportedly trained its R1 model on a cluster of 50,000 Hopper series GPUs made up of 30,000 uh, HG6 H20 units, 10,000 H800s, and 10,000 H100s that were supplied through its investor. Uh, R2 will require a uh, substantially more powerful cluster for training. There might be another issue though. Reports indicate that DeepSeek's AI platform is tuned specifically for NVIDIA hardware, which uh, not only leaves the company vulnerable to the availability of NVIDIA GPUs, but also makes its clients depend on the supply of AI accelerators like NVIDIA uh, HGX H20. To that end, it is crucial for DeepSeek to make R2 inference work on domestic hardware platforms such as Huawei's Ascend. So yeah, so basically that is going on, right? Uh, China cannot get access to the AI hardware because we are trying to very specifically trying to limit them gaining access. DeepSeek tried to train on Huawei's Ascend uh, GPUs. That did not work out well, uh, but it, they do seem to be working for inference. Basically, when you take a look at this, what does this actually mean at the end of the day? Does this mean that China is failing or are these just the hiccups of, you know, a new uh, oh, technology stack uh, being created uh, relatively quickly in China and they'll be able to, to deal with the problems as time goes by? I would, I would argue for that. I mean, the fact that they can already do inference uh, with these Ascend GPUs is, is a pretty impressive thing. Uh, again, if they, if they can deploy the Ascend GPUs uh, for for all of their infrastructure purposes for the for the actual inference uh, that is that is a major uh, market right there, <clears throat> and then as they they approve they improve their uh, their GPUs for training, you know a year two years whatever down the pike then um, they'll probably be fine they'll probably be fine. And the other thing to be looking at too is as this talks about right designing designing the models designing the systems based off of the particular stack. So if they're not able to get access to Nvidia GPUs going in the future or their substandard, right? Designing things to start using the Ascend stack, <clears throat> and then once they're using the Huawei stack, why why would you ever go back? Right? This is this is the perfect example of legacy. And so there, there's two ways you can take this, right? You can say, hey, look, look, right, they're addicted. Because that's what the Trump administration loves to say, that they're we want them to be addicted. Because the Trump administration are morons. Every goddamn one of them. Have you seen Lutnick? Have you seen Lutnick talk? Oh my God. You would think that was a parody. You would think that's a joke. 
but it's true. Anyways, they want to get, uh, you know, China addicted to our NVIDIA. Here's the thing, as it shows here, right, where the Huawei Ascend GPUs are at, they are not where they need to be, and they've already, right, DeepSeek has already designed all of their stuff based off of NVIDIA, as I've said before, right, legacy, legacy always wins. Legacy wins at the end of the day. So since they built R1 on, uh, on NVIDIA, they end up doing R2 on NVIDIA, and if we lived in a sane system, they would do R3, R4, R5, R10 on NVIDIA, because once you've built it for that system, once you go legacy, you just never go back. The issue that we have right now though, right, is our administration, our government officials are literally forcing China to migrate away from our AI systems. One, not only do you have like the AI diffusion rule and the export controls, which are their own insanity, but then on top of that, right, you have the Trump administration literally coming out and literally saying that the AI hardware that we're gonna sell is gonna be gimped. We, they're literally saying it's going to be subpar. So you look at China, right? Do you, do, you want, do you want to buy subpar equipment? Do you want to depend on subpar equipment that you may or may not actually be able to get your hands on? That is going to have tracking devices attached. They did a video recently, right? The U.S. Go the US government, right? The intelligence agencies are already slapping tracking devices onto these GPUs, these graphics cards, and this AI equipment that's getting shipped out, right? Do you want to deal with that? And so what you got to be thinking about, right, is we are forcing, we are forcing the second largest population country in the world, that is the factory of the world, to migrate off of our AI systems, right? It lit, we are making it literally untenable for them to rely on our AI systems. So although they already have a history binding them to our systems as legacy infrastructure, we're forcing them to go into a different direction. And what I want you to think about here, right? When you laugh and when you sneer and we say, this shows how far China is behind, Realize, as soon as they make that migration to Ascend, as soon as that, they make that full migration to Huawei, as soon as the models are able to be trained, they will never fucking go back to NVIDIA. Because once you have embedded those systems as legacy systems, they never go the hell away. So anyways, there's two ways you can take this particular story. That's the way that I'm taking it. So what do you think about this? What do you think about DeepSeek failing to be able to train the R2 model on uh, the Huawei AI systems and they had to go back to NVIDIA? Do you see this as a win? Or do you see this as simply foreshadowing the future that, uh, that I see coming down the pike? I don't know, put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like these videos, give us a thumbs down. If you don't like my politics, watch every single one of my videos. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't agree with me, if you don't agree with me, I demand, I demand you do a playlist of every video I've ever created and watch it and watch it. <laughs> what? I, I'm not a comic book artist. <laughs> I always love that. There's that, that dumbass blue haired comic book artist, you know, that middle aged, you know, moron. She has the glasses. If you don't like my politics, then don't buy my comics. I'd be like, if you don't like my politics, make sure to buy every single edition of the cover of my comics to use them as toilet paper. I dare you, I dare you to buy all 10, you know, editions of the first copy of the comic book and use them as toilet paper. I bet you won't do that. I bet you won't spend $100 to buy every edition of my comic book and then shit on it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh, I do love the woke people. The blue haired people put a smile on my face. What can I say? They're so dumb. They're so dumb. Anyways, what was I saying? I don't know. Leave a good comment. Leave a horrible comment. <laughs> Leave any comment. See y'all later.